Morning, Gaffer. Morning, Ginger. If you want to watch it, Gaffer, your tie's a bit bald. What do you want me to do, buy a wig? He's the Gaffer. Your Highness. Oh, they've arrived then. Well, if you mean that heap of Chippendale do it yourself firewood, it was dumped in here about a half an hour ago. They've all right this by. Hey! <laughs> hey! That's a bit handy with a bit of luck, that'll fall off and break his leg. I think we'll have a couple of inches off the, one of the legs of this stool as well. It's not wobbly enough. You wouldn't care to explain what it's doing there in snarls of one syllable, would you? <laughs> the right position as well. I think the icy blast will come straight through the fan, go down his back and whistle through the hole of the afternoon. <laughs> so, who is it for? Oh, got a few nice sharp splinters in here. That should deflate his ego. <laughs> All right, don't tell me. I'm not interested. I don't want to know. Forget it. <sighs> this lot, Betty, is for the son and heir of the Muffet misfortune, my lad Spencer. Your Spencer is coming here? Uh, he's taking a... Temporary commission with the Muffet Mounted Idiots whilst he's waiting for his call-up papers for the militant tendency. I thought he was at university, studying social security forms. Ah, he was, but not for long. Just long enough to pick up his government grant, without which he wouldn't have been able to travel the country attacking the government who granted him it. So what happened? Well, unfortunately, he forgot to put on his disguise of soap and water. The dean spotted him when he should have been at a maths exam and invited him to go forth and multiply. <laughs> You mean he was thrown out? Ungeaned and de-scarfed in front of the entire student body. Oh, that sounds a bit hard. Oh, uh, well, he had fallen from Grace once, and Grace happens to be the dean's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, he sounds just the type we need around here, next to a tax man with a toothache. It is not my idea, Betty. It's my lady wife, Doris. She thought it's about time I taught him how to run a business. Mind you, that shouldn't take long. A businessman only needs two talents. One's a good memory, and... I forget what the other is. <laughs> so why the unwelcome on the map? Well, I thought if we could make a rough enough for him, he might turn it in of his own accord, and then the missus couldn't blame me. Well, what is there for him to do here, anyway? Well, the only way you can think of something, anything monotonous and boring will suffice. Well, I suppose he could make the tea. Oh, uh, no, he can't do that. No, you're the one who makes the tea. I'm, I'm relying on your tea as a last resort to get rid of it. <laughs> Thank you very much, and what's wrong with it? I don't know. It's probably the way you forget to wash up when the chimps have used the cups. Oh! Right, hell, Harry. This must be the earliest you've ever been late. Or haven't you finished yesterday yet? I must warn you that industrial action is imminent. You don't mean to tell me you're all going to start moving your arms and legs about? No, I do not. Oh, that's a pity. Normally following the full flood of the industrial revolution in there is like watching wet paint dry. I am referring to official union action being contemplated, such as a go slow. Hope it's a bit more of a success than your last down tools. When it was over, you couldn't remember where you put the down <laughs> And is there any point behind all this caper, or is it your subtle way of telling me you're going to work a strike in hand? I am just protesting against the blatant nepotism of the management. Nepotism? I've never nepotism in my life. <laughs> then why have we got your son in there, thinly disguised as a worker? In there. By hell, what with you and him, I shall have to put a cool in front on the time clock. <laughs> He's not supposed to be in there, Harry. He's obviously lost his way. That all sounds very suspicious to me. What is he doing here at all if he has no intention of working? I might ask you the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's supposed to be in here. I've even bought him a desk he can fall asleep at. Go and bring him in. Tell him to try it on for size. Oh, all right. Providing it is very clearly understood that we are having no fifth columnists, no stool pigeons, and no gaffer grovelers of any kind in there. No, no, not even if they are members of the Agents Provocateurs Union, ape you. I am ape you too, Harry. <laughs> I know that swine of an old man of mine is the gaffer here. They say that blood is thicker than water, but it isn't as thick as he is. Now, I say we should reject the work ethic and prepare for the coming struggle. Every dog has his day. Don't you mean dogma? <laughs> this is not a laughing matter, brothers. Our day is coming with the revolution. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to strike at the boss with monthly sit-ins, because that is where we shine. And to make sure we do them properly, I'm going to demand time off to practice them. What do you think of that, brother? Sounds like a nice ploy. <laughs> what 
Thanks for this love. Well, it was in this morning's post. It's a census form from the Min of Production. It certainly is. Their scriptwriters ought to be on a production bonus. Have you, have you read some of this? Listen to this. State the increase in production of non-industrial units over the preceding 12 months as a percentage of the average production over the last four years, where a unit is defined as the smallest independent... I can't even read it. Independent product of a standard module as laid down in implementation note five. It's enough to make you go racing down the street screaming out that somebody in white all is mad. The only snag is they'd have you under the official secrets act. Ah, enter the United States Cavalry. <laughs> You're halfway to getting a degree in idiocy. See if you can translate this lot into the ordinary everyday Swahili. What's this then? Your first job. Get sat at your desk and decode it. I don't want to sit at any rotten desk helping to prop up the rotten capitalist system. I want to do some real work, get my hands dirty. Oh, yeah. Got every chance of doing that hand in these rounds. Oh, hell, have you seen the print? It's diabolical. What's this? The Urban Gorilla's Guide? How to build a Marxist paradise without requiring planning permission. <laughs> well, I've got news for you, Robespierre. Harry's already been in to see me about you. Right, Harry? Right, Gaffer. And as far as the works are concerned, you are not wanted in there. The lads don't want you in there. You are persona non gratin, which means they're all cheesed up with you. Right, Harry? <laughs> Wrong, Gaffer. Pardon? <laughs> I have changed my mind. Young son of Gaffer here has got some very bright ideas. For instance, we are going to formulate a new wage claim based on the information he has given us about the state of your bank account. And we're going to have another look at that bonus scheme because he says it's rigged. I think from now on you're going to find out that honesty is the best policy. Yeah, maybe it is, but who can afford the premiums? <laughs> anyway, we have just appointed him personal aid to me, the shop steward. Have you? Well, it won't be for long, because he is destined for greater things, like inclusion in the Guinness Book of Records with being the first man to be made redundant before he can even clock on. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Any attempt to get rid of an unofficial union official and we'll be out quicker than pressurised toothpaste. Come on, sir. <laughs> no, after you. No, after you, Spencer. <coughs> Let me tell you, that lad is a treasure. Well, he always looks like something that's been dug up. <laughs> well, I tell you something, by the time that lad's finished, you won't have many secrets left. Yeah, he takes after his mother. I've got a terrible feeling she's got a part-time job at the KGB. <laughs> I think I've got an idea, though. I'll uh, see you in a bit. I've got to pop out for a bit. Yeah, well, what do you want me to do about that stuff? Well, I don't want the lads to bung it in the yard. We'll try and flog it later to that arty twit down the road, tell him it's modern antiques. What, that silver bite sawdust? So I'll carve some little romantic billy do on it to make out it, it was the school desk of some historical famous romantic figure. You're going to carve what? A billy do. Don't you speak German? <laughs> you know, I'll carve something like E equals MC squared. That's about as romantic as garlic lipstick. <laughs> I thought you might say that. But, of course, it's what it stands for, you see, Betty. You see, the E stands for Einstein, the MC stands for Madame Curie, and the squared stands for the couple of Bobby Slipter for being quiet about their little bit of relativity in the school playground. I don't understand that. I didn't expect you to. After all, you're not a physicist. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Puddle. Is he in, then? He? The big fella with a size 15 stomach and a size 10 skin. I think you mean Mr. Moffat. Could be, if he's about an inch taller than his hair. Uh, but, hello. Mr. Moffat? It uh, depends. If you're selling, I'm not interested. If you're collecting, I'm skint. But if you're paying, I'm in. I'm, I'm Sparky Bright. Bright Spark Electrics. World leaders in electronic wizardry and supplies of high class hearing aid batteries by appointment to His Worship the Mayor. Oh, yeah, the wire wiggler, yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a little confidential job I want you to do. You see, I want, to, I want an intercom fitting between the workshop, which is through there, into this office. You see, I want the microphone to be in there, loudspeaker in here. I just want it one way. I can always shout back. Now, uh, how soon can you do it? Well, it'll have to be either early this afternoon or just after lunch. That's a choice. <laughs> it is when one's this year and one's next. <laughs> I'm busy in between. That makes things a bit awkward, that, but you are the cheapest. And I've just been operated on by the taxman for open wallet surgery. Oh, did he catch my full mange? <laughs> Mind you, cheap can be expensive in the long run. Expensive is expensive at all times. 
But uh, he couldn't do the job. Look, I'd like the loudspeaker down there underneath Betty's typewriter, all right? Nice and unobtrusive. I don't want any of this to be seen. Wire along the wall in somewhere, through the door, straight over the top of the passage and into the works, and that's where I want the microphone. Right, I'll get in there. Uh, don't, don't rush in there with your roller rampant. I, uh, <laughs> I, want this, I want this to be a bit of a surprise for him. Then how am I going to do the measuring up for the wiring? I want to see where you want the microphone and things. Why don't you tell them that you're putting in music while you work? <laughs> Talk ridiculous. They know I know they don't. Well, and how about an extractor fan? We're supposed to have them. It's not a bad idea. They might, they might believe that. They might believe I was trying to extract something. No comment. Yeah. Shall, we, uh, shall we inch our way in? Exactly what are you up to? <laughs> Got it then? I'll be in there at two o'clock. Right, and don't forget, stump. All right, what's that all about? I mean, with your voice, you don't need an intercog, you need a noise abatement order. Betty, I've got to get my lad from out of there and quick before the old one strike, so I've got to make him about as popular as Dutch Elm disease of the bed leg. <laughs> so, what's with all the electronic stuff? Well, if I can pick up one or two of their secrets, they'll wonder who the mole is, won't they? Then I'll drop one or two hints about Spencer being a double agent, and before he knows it, he'll get slung out on his pamphlet. Oh, I think that's sneaky, underhanded, unethical, immoral, and it's probably illegal. Oh, it's better than that. It's workable. <laughs> Not when Harry and the lads see it being installed this afternoon. Oh, that's right. I trust a woman to spoil a good idea with facts. How the hell am I going to get them out there without them being suspicious? Well, why don't you take them on a trip somewhere, as long as it's not a picnic? We've had six weeks' rain already this month. Picnic? I couldn't afford to take them as far as the front door. <laughs> Mind you, perhaps I won't have to. Hey, Gaffer, what is all this measuring up about? Harry, what would you say if I told you I was having music while you work and extractor fans fitted in the workshop? I would say you were planning to hold a disco in the yard. <laughs> Of little faith. Anyway, I'm a little bit busy, Harry, because apart from that little gesture, I'm I'm working on the uh, annual works outing. What? Oh yeah, I thought it I did make it a bit different this year. It's already different. We've never had one before. <laughs> no, that's that's really what I mean. You see, I, I thought instead of not going out somewhere, we uh, we could have it in here. Oh, works outing in the works. <laughs> does that not make it a works inning? <laughs> Yes, I suppose it does really, when you come to me. But I didn't mean just in the works, you see. I thought we could have it in, in the boardroom. And then, of course, I could lock the door and nobody could come in and disturb the wild abandon. Oh, all right. Provided everything is free, I'll make a note of it in my diary. Make a note of it on your time card. It's two o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, I'll ring you back later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, Beth, here we are. How about that, then? Oh, you remembered it. That toilet was really beginning to smell. Thank you, Betty. You know what that is. That is Moffat Multigrade. It's what? The grog for the party. Ten-week-old single malt descaling fluid for the elementary canal. Not that ghastly home brew of yours. The stuff that melted the breathalyzer and turned the police car green. Betty, anything that costs seven pence a bottle that does not disintegrate the stomach wall can't be all bad. Oh, and here's the eats. Plain cheese and onion, salt and pepper. Here, here's the act. <laughs> the act? We've only got the one. We just have to take it in turns wearing it. Mind you, we know if anybody's cheating by wearing it twice, leaves a dirty great orange stain across your forehead. <laughs> Here come the revelers. <laughs> right, now, where, where, where's all the others at? I told them to go home. You did what? Well, there's nothing in their contract of employment that says they have to enjoy themselves at work. Why are you so anti against everything I do? I, I mean, I know I wouldn't let you play on a roundabout when you were a little lad, but Spaghetti Junction hadn't been built then. <laughs> we are here in our official capacity to, to find out what you're up to. Look, I, I just don't understand why, why, you, why you always look a gilf, gift horse up the back of the paddock. Honestly, I mean, this is just a celebration in honour of the founder of this great company of ours, my dad, your granddad, old Eli. Why? How old would he have been? How old would he have been at what age? <laughs> No, 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 no. He means why now? I mean, Grandad's birthday was three months ago. It's four months to the day he died. Yes, well, we all know that, but I mean, 
I mean, the, the, the Queen always has an official birthday, so your granddad always wanted an official death day. I mean, he, he, and, and apart from that, the flowers are cheaper at this time. But look, do you want this free booze up or not? It's not that stuff you make yourself, is it? Last time I saw this, you had a couple of paintbrushes standing in it. Don't worry, Alan. That is the finest insulation you can get. Gives you a double grade into the eyeball. Look, it is for nothing. You'll be amazed how much better it tastes. I can't drink this rubbish. I'm going to go down to the Red Cow for a pint of real ale. That is, providing you can lend me a quid. I can see it coming. The record never changes, does it? Here. It'll make it worthwhile to get rid of it. Just make sure it lasts all day. So, uh, yeah, as a disaster, this party should be a very big success. There's going to be more people at it than a one-man band in the interval. Why, I'm still here, and you don't scare me with your sassinac sarsaparilla. You promised us a party, and a party we will have. Check the damn thing off, Eric. No! Oh, in vino vertigo. The first man to fall flat in his face could spill an awful lot of secrets. This could be very interesting. Come on! All right, but don't blame me if you get a kid getting a kilt. You better stop in here, Betty. Keep your eyes on that battery, Mara. Make sure he does the job properly, right? Oh, no. It's not going to be a pretty sight. I've got a terrible feeling this could be an action replay of Bannockburn. <laughs> and here's another question. What happened to those new lockers you promised us? Pass. <laughs> How did you manage to fiddle that bonus scheme so that the harder we worked, the more money we owed you? Pass. Thank you, Fred Moffat, Corporal of Industry. You have scored zero. You passed on 274. And I would not believe a word you said anyway. And now it's my turn. Our next contestant is Harry McGonagall Campbell, failed shop steward, unfrocked Gordon Islander, and lapsed earthling. As we all know, your specialist subject is skiving. And here's your starter for ten. Who clocks on for you every morning when you come in late? Bass. <laughs> and, Harry, who was it? I've started so often. <laughs> Sorted out there. What are they all for? Party fodder. A gaggle of gin jugglers. You know, women. Hey, where is everybody? It's not a fear for Irv, it's housewarming. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll go and get that fella for music while you work. He's out there doing the wiring up now. Hey, What's that? What's that? <laughs> oh, I smell a rat. Well, you don't want me to supply all the vermin round here with underarm deodorant, do you? <laughs> knew you were up to something, I knew it! Out of it! Out of it! Hey, girls, you know who that Scots winner? That's Rod Stewart's granddad, you know? <laughs> I want to get his autograph. Hello. Am I late or is the clock 12 hours fast? I think I must have got out of my time warp on the wrong side this morning. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not the only one. Harry was here before me. How did things go yesterday? Did uh, you know who fix the you know what? You know well? Eventually. <laughs> I could have rewired a gross of glowworms quicker. <laughs> oh, hell, not you at all. There must, must be a getting up good virus going about. Hey, you crafty, underhanded old toad. I'm waiting for your explanation. Spencer? You mustn't talk to your daddy like that. And the fact that it's true is no excuse. Thank you, Betty. I'm listening to the talking punk. You'd better, because I know all about this Moffat Intelligence 5 stuff with the hidden microphones coming in here. I came back yesterday afternoon and saw the electronics chap in the middle of installing it. Yes, I wondered why you were wandering around like a Labrador in a lamppost factory. So I suppose that means you're going to start shouting it from the housetops, or in your case, screaming it down some sewers. Well, that depends uh, what it's worth to keep quiet. I think somebody must have cloned you. Do you really mean to tell me, Spencer, that you would double-cross your workmates? It's enough to make Keir Hardy turn in his grave. 
Presumably at one worker's revolution a minute. My mate? That lot? I'm not hanging around this dump with that bunch of time clock tremblers forever. Spencer, you are talking about my loyal, hard-working stuff. <laughs> Your lot? Look, I'm just practicing on them till I get my certificate for manipulation of the moronic masses before moving on to greater things. In the meantime, I am a bit short of funds, so shall we call it... Shall we call it 50 pieces of silver? Make it 29. I insist on a discount. <laughs> Hurry, I was, I was just saying... I heard exactly what you were just saying. I'm the shop steward of the Moronic Masses local branch. I'm just telling you that I'm calling a strike unless you're out of here in ten seconds flat. But, Harry, look... Uh, uh, goodbye, Spencer. Shut the door on the way out. There's a good lad. I'll explain to you, Mother, it was force majeure, and you can explain to her that's not a breakfast food. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Come the revolution, you'll be hanging from the next lamppost to him. Right. <laughs> I bet he ties a granny knot. <laughs> there goes one of a loathing son. Ah, he was beginning to be a bit of an ear sore anyway. Oh, much lower than that, Harry. Look, I know it's none of my business, Harry, and I wouldn't be talking about it if it was, but how come that you heard what was going on in here through two walls and a corridor? I knew the gaffer was up to something, so I just came in here early this morning, sniffed around till I found the wiring and then switched it all around. I put the microphone in here so I could stand through there and listen to everything you were saying while I was at my leave. <laughs> and a right budge up of a job you made of it as well, Harry. The damn thing wouldn't have worked at all if I hadn't fixed it. <laughs> you mean you knew I'd altered it? Who oh, I knew. <laughs> Well, I mean, it wasn't any good putting it back when it wasn't a secret any longer, so I, I thought I'd use it to blunt a bit of false information. But, of course, then my ever-loving son started screaming his expensively educated mouth off and solved the problem for me. I don't know which of you two is the biggest rogue. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> I used to get prizes for it. <laughs> Betty, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Oh, you're right, Harry. Necessity is the mother of invention. It's not our fault if it's a one-parent family. <laughs> shall we, uh, shall we call it quits? Right, Gaffer. No recriminations, provocations, denunciations or victimization. You've got it. Of course, Harry, when I say call it quits, that does not, of course, include the work on the intercom. Pardon? Well, I mean, I should have to send it back now that I don't need it, so I've got to make out it's no good so I don't have to pay for it. And of course, in order to do that, it'll all have to be put back the way it was in the first place. And, of course, as you've changed it round in your own time, you'll have to put it back in your own time while you put that one in. <laughs>